What's up, YouTube? Tenton here. And today, I will be borrowing... Stealing. Borrowing an idea from my good old buddy, Nemesis and Biffweed. So after this video, go check out their videos, which will be linked in the description below. That aside, this video will only be dealing with the Persona 4 and Persona 5 cast, since I've only played those games, and we will only be discussing the playable characters from both. Well, with one exception. Before you watch this video, to make sure you're not a robot, please look at these pictures and identify the street signs, the cars, the fire hydrants, the shop fronts, the numbers on the front doors, and the ever-growing sense of frustration. Aegis, Aegis, however you pronounce her name, I haven't played Persona 3, versus Neol Vermilion is not a match I can really comment on. I know quite literally nothing about Noel, and I only know surface level stuff on Aegis. I still don't know how to say her name. But this is Persona 3's Special Little Robots most requested episode. And from what I've seen, apparently Aegis would struggle to even hurt Neol, which uh, I don't know how to say either of their names. Darn it. <laughs> which is unfortunate because I definitely prefer the toaster waifu, but it do be like that sometimes. Well, I think you all know who's next. Behold my staff! For this entry, I actually have two ideas. We could be boring and just give you a fight with another JoJo character, or we could do a Persona protagonist battle royale. I like the concept of having all three Persona boys go at it to truly see which of the three games is the best. I can only imagine the literal salt mine of a comment section this will create. My general thoughts on a winner come down to perspective. Makoto has the universe arcana compared to the other's world arcanas, but Makoto has less combat experience for, um, reasons and while i like you he probably is going to be getting last when compared to joker i'm not sure who exactly wins but i think it's either makoto or joker with you unfortunately coming in last but hey he's still the most chad persona pro tag in my book but yeah i really like this matchup but i understand it's not the most likely so here's a png of you fighting jotaro and with that my quota is met next at last the roof goes on So, uh, Kaminari, I, I guess? Okay, listen, Yosuke had basically nothing, so I had to be creative. This matchup is definitely thematic. Both are high school students with superpowers, both are perverts, and they both get a lot of shit from their female friends that people also just so happen to ship them with. Power-wise, it's not similar at all. Yosuke uses wind compared to Kaminari's electricity. This matchup is actually closer than I thought. Yosuke being weak to electricity helps Kaminari's chances, but Yosuke's healing, better 1v1 track record, and overall more battle experience should help him lock down the fight. This isn't the most thematic episode, but hey, it's either this or we have him like fight a Sailor Moon character, so count your blessings. Kicking? Oh, I want to do some kicking! <laughs> Why you? Why? <laughs> To no one's shock, we have Chie versus Mako. These two are often cited as being so similar that people joke that they're the same character. It's easily Chie's most popular match, and even Death Battle has acknowledged his existence on the Death Battle cast. From what I hear, it's a total stomp and Chie wins with minimal effort, which I'm completely fine with, since, well, I kinda sorta dated her in my first playthrough of the game, and seeing my little meat bun get murdered is not an experience I would want to go through, in all honesty. My personal feelings aside, this is clearly Chie's best matchup, and I'm down to see Persona 4's best girl, Galactic Punt, kill a kill into a losing streak. I have you to thank for this. I love you. It was at this point I realized this was going to be harder than I thought. Yukiko didn't have the best options, but I eventually settled with my Shiranui from Fatal Fury. Both use fire, both wield fans, both have a red color scheme, and are both a tad bit airheaded, and the generic connection that they are both anime women, yada yada yada. The match has connections, and May could use another episode since her fight with Chun-Li is seriously outdated. This match is a pretty decent stomp for Yukiko. Persona scaling and stats trump Fatal Fury pretty easily, but hey, I'd love to see this one, mostly for Yukiko. She is just such a treat to watch, and any excuse to see Persona 4 repped in death battle is enough for me. Just set up the chairs. 
Kanji, thankfully, unlike two of our previous fighters, had an obvious choice. Kanji versus Beowulf, a brawl between two manly meatheads who both just so happened to wield the greatest weapon ever created. In fact, this weapon was created by teachers across the world to keep kids in place so they'd have to listen to their mindless lectures. That's right, these dudes wield chairs. Now, obviously, calling Kanji nothing but a meathead isn't really accurate, but he does tend to be a bit dense, so I, I went with it. From what I hear, Beowulf is physically stronger, but Kanji is likely faster, and his persona helps him clutch the victory. I want this match for the dialogue alone. The banter these two could create is just too perfect to ignore. That and the idea of watching these two beat each other to death with chairs is just really funny. Did you ever notice how... Blah. Forks? Forks? Come on! Okay, we have officially hit rock frickin' bottom. She's the nav. What do you want from me? She's not even playable in Persona 4. We had to wait for Arena for her to do anything. So here is Rise versus Athena Asiyama. What are the connections? They're both pop stars and they're both women. Congratulations, that's all I got. Depending on scaling, I hear Rise wins, but I no clue how accurate that is so do with that information what you will as you can see i'm a very busy bear bearing in mind all of teddy's options monokuma just made sense both are bear love and mascots from the respected series both have a bearing on their magical powers and bear the weight of responsibility that comes with watching over a group of kids personality wise they are rather different teddy being the sole bearer of hope in his world inside the tv and monokuma only wanting to bring despair i mean despair the concept alone has very much sold me on the episode and imagine seeing Teddy's happy demeanor with Monokuma's narcissistic mind. This episode's flames won't grizzle out. In fact, Brandon Yates, one of the composers behind the show, has already made a killer track for this match. The episode is thematic, bound to be a ton of fun, and we will surely bear witness to the most amount of bear puns the world has ever seen. Smokey vs. McGruff can sit down and behold the unbearable fury of this animalistic altercation. But did you know she's a girl, though? These two both had, like, no better options, and this match was surprisingly thematic. Both are blue-haired anime women that pretend to be men to protect themselves. Lucina does it to protect the space-time continuum and make sure she was born, and Naoto does it because women are not treated seriously by the police force in her world. She wishes to be a man so she wouldn't be treated differently. Or that's at least what I've been told, because I uh, haven't gotten that far in Persona 4 yet. But, like, everyone knows that spoiler at this point, so I just decided to bite the bullet. This match might seem unfair for Lucina since Naoto wields a gun. But Lucina based off scaling should be faster than lightning, so a simple bullet will be nowhere near enough to put her down. Strength wise, Lucina is likely stronger, but Naoto is likely much more versatile with her persona, but Lucina's skills and items help her out in this regard, and with both being lightning timers, it's actually very close. I don't actually know who I think wins, and after a season filled with stomps, this is actually a nice change of pace. I'd love to see the fight start with both of them disguised, and after they receive some damage, their outfits are destroyed enough for them to both realize they're fighting another woman. It could be similar to the Zuko Todoroki scene from that episode. Now, Turner and Persona could have some sick combos. Lucina obviously needs a good Aether scene, and if Naoto wins, I'd love them to give her a badass gun related finisher. A good old fashioned headshot would be cool, or you could have her Persona hold Lucina in place, allowing Naoto to get the shot off. Depending on the level of brutality, they could have Lucina desperately screaming trying to escape, only for Naoto to cut her down. She died alone with no one to help her, just like her father from the future. Dark theming aside, I think this would be a fantastic episode, and it's pretty much the best matchup for both characters that I could find. I mean, does anybody really want to see Lucina versus Chrono? Like, don't we have enough stomps already? Anyway, with all the Persona 4 casts out of the way, it's time for Persona 5. I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no thank you. Yet again, we have a pretty obvious choice. Joker vs. Giorno is the obvious choice, and it's massively requested. The connections are clear, two stylish thieves that have the stand like creatures fight for them. I'm not much of a JoJo's guy, but, well, you probably know that I like Persona 5 at this point. I've bought Persona 5 and Royal, Strikers, I have all the Funko Pops, heck, I even have all the copies of the manga. Easily a top 10 game of all time for me. So I really want this matchup. Who wins? Um... I have no clue. I hear the fight's a brutal stomp, but both sides say it. 
The Persona 5 side argues that Joker in his Phantom Thief form is a theoretical concept, therefore he can't be erased. Meanwhile, the Giorno fans argue that Joker was affected by reality warping before, so therefore he should be affected by Giorno's stand. Stats-wise, Joker killed a false god who could affect the reality of Japan and even the whole world. Meanwhile, I hear Jojo characters at Giorno's level should not be that powerful. Speed is debatable for both, lightning and light stuff, yada yada yada, you, you know it at this point. The Big Bang Burger should shift things dramatically, depending on how much they give it credit for. If Joker is universal by scaling him to it, then yeah, it's a wrap. Regardless of the outcome, I'd love to see Joker do a solo all at attack. The Sentinel obviously needs to be there, and a good old fashioned JoJo punch scene is a must. And if Joker wins, we gotta have it end with a shot to the head like he does to Royal's final boss. Out of all the matchups we've had so far, this one is probably the most likely to happen, and I'm kinda fine with that. I am not a cat. Morgana, like Yosuke, didn't really have the best options. Well, I mean, unless you want me to cop out and have him fight Teddy. I didn't want many same series fights, so I've decided to go with Jabanyan from Yokai Watch. Connections. Uh, they're cats from RPGs that revolve around collecting magical creatures, those being yokais and personas. Both serve as mentor figures for the protagonist, and both serve as a mascot for their games. I hear Morgana wins through scaling to the rest of Persona 5 cast, and if this fight were to happen, I'd be fine with it. Me next, please. This one was pretty hard to find a good matchup for. Ryuji's options included three Ruby characters, Sun being the only one I honestly considered. I saw Jolteon and the Sailor Moon character, both seemed like a bad idea, so I eventually settled on Bakugo from My Hero Academia. Now, could you argue Kaminari would be a better fit? Well, well, yes. And if Yosuke didn't already take that option away, I might have picked him for Ryuji's opponent. Then again, Ryuji's immune to electricity, so Kaminari is doomed from the get go. Regardless, Bakugo was the best option I could find for him. Both are blonde anime characters that can be rather rash and aggressive. However, they are also way deeper than that. Both are seen as the protagonist's right-hand man, more so for Ryuji, but Bakugo certainly fits the Vegeta archetype. They both have elemental powers, and they both feel guilty over events they deem themselves responsible for. Bakugo feels responsible for All Might's fight with All For One, and Ryuji feels guilt over the current state of the track team at his school. Based on my notes, Ryuji might win due to scaling from Persona 5's final boss, and his speed arguably being light, but Bakugo likely has more destructive power under his belt. Bakugo is also way smarter and familiar with 1v1 combat, compared to Ryuji who has exclusively fought in a group and has no formal combat training. Regardless of who wins, I want this fight for the banter between the two. I'd also love to see Ryuji use the god hammer he can summon to clash with one of Bakugo's big finisher moves. TLDR, I just want to watch these two angry anime boys punch the shit out of each other. You just won yourself a cat fight! On had a fairly obvious choice. Cat Noir made the most sense, and unlike Nami, he doesn't really have any better options, while Nami had plenty. Both are cat-related superheroes that use their powers to defeat corrupt individuals, and they both are models. Based on my notes, On only wins depending on what you buy. If she gets Big Bang Burger scaling, then she wins. If not, she might be able to win through scaling to Persona 5's final boss, and her being able to heal herself, her FTL reaction speeds, and Cat Noir apparently having a time limit on his transfer. Odd's arsenal is also notably larger, and she is more combat focused in terms of her character. On, while not being my personal favorite Persona 5 girl, is still cool in my book, and I'd be hyped for this. Yeah, well, that's true. This show is weird. Yusuke had other options than this, but I love it too much not to do this matchup. Yusuke versus Silvando from Dragon Quest. Two eccentric swordmen who both have uh, questionable sexual preferences. Yusuke has just straight up been confirmed what he is in Persona 5 Dancing. Enough of your preposterous prying. What I meant was I'm not focused on any particular type. In other words, all women are my type. While Silvando is just left ambiguous. Is he gay or is he just European? The world may never know. Both also just so happen to be the fifth party member of the respective teams, and they both have daddy issues. They both also enjoy activities that are often not associated with masculinity, Yosuke being an artist and Silvando being essentially a hyperactive clown for the circus. The connections are way deeper than what else I've seen for Yusuke, and I'd love to see how Death Battle would present this fight. Yusuke's ice magic versus Silvando's fire, sword versus sword combat, Yusuke's guns versus Silvando's pepped up state, plus all the persona related stuff. The banter will surely be a treat, but if Silvando doesn't say Early. 
we riot. Now the winner is kind of hard. Silvando's Fire Breath will certainly help considering Yusuke's weak to it, but Yusuke's Persona can certainly help him out. Speed wise, they both scale to lightning and light. Power wise, they both took hits from god level characters that could affect the entire world with their powers, so I'm not sure who wins. But I do know that if Yusuke ever gets under the show, this needs to be his opponent. Speaking of meteors, check out the size of the homestick! Another fairly obvious pick, but Tifa vs Makoto just made sense. Two of gaming's best JRPG girls who mostly rely on fisticuffs. Both are considered the protagonist's main love interest, even if some of the other girls make better arguments. They also both uh, have, um, how should I say this? As with Tifa's strong, twin, firm, no, fists. Also, she's got a really nice rag. Did I mention that yet? This match is fairly popular, and after Tifa's rather poor treatment in her fight with Yang, I feel this matchup is exactly what she needs. Based off my knowledge, the Big Bang Gurger and Supernova scaling decide this, but both have FTL stuff and plenty of spells and powers to throw at each other. If Death Battle buys both, I hear Makoto wins through the Big Bang Burger, seemingly being more impressive. Regardless of a victor, my wants for the episode are as follows. I'd love to see Makoto ride in on her bike persona and use it for a bit. It, but then have it transformed into its awakened state. Tifa's limit breaks are an obvious choice, and a stylish over-the-top finisher for either would be nice. Don't have much else to say, this fight is awesome, and I hope we get it. Unlike Rise, this matchup was an easy match to decide on. Futapa Sakura versus Bernadetta Von Varley from Fire Emblem Three Houses. These two are both shut-ins who prefer to be alone in a nice secluded place. Both eventually work out their issues thanks to the protagonist and can end up falling in love with them. Both are rather quirky and have some funny reactions when interacting with the rest of the cast. Bernie has way more to work with thanks to her multiple different classes. Meanwhile, Futapa just kind of flies, drops bombs, can buff stats, and heal. Stats-wise, they have FTL, but Futapa's durability is certainly more impressive. Based off what I've heard, Futapa wins, which I'm fine with. I actually romance both of them in my respective playthroughs of their games, and Futapa is, uh, to put it lightly, my favorite female video game character of all time. Her story just... it just hits different, dog. I don't know what to say. That and, well... She's adorable. Like seriously, seeing her hide behind Joker whenever she is startled is just precious. And Futapa also kind of functions as a secondary protagonist. She arguably changes the most thanks to Joker's influence. She has beef with Shido for killing her mom, and she shares the same deep relationship with Sojuro that Joker does, though for obviously different reasons. Plus, seeing Sojuro's reaction to Joker dating her is just too- Oh yeah, and Bernie's cool, I guess. She's great, she's a great archer, and I've used her in all five of my playthroughs of Three Houses. She just doesn't hold the same attachment to me when compared to Persona 5's best girl. In, in all brutal honesty, yeah, will this match ever happen? No, not at all. But hey, a man can dream. This is my right. Until I say so, don't let go of me. We had a bit of a streak of obvious choices, and that's not changing. Haru vs. Camilla is a simple match that I happen to enjoy a lot. The connections are that they are both daughters of high-ranking individuals, one being a CEO and the other being a king. Both of them eventually turn on their fathers and help the protagonist take him down. Both wield axes and have a partner that helps them in combat. Haru has her persona, and Camilla has her dragon. Both are sweet girls who also have a dark side when it comes to combat. Both heavily imply they enjoy hitting people with those axes of theirs. Cutting down the enemy as they approach. Ah, what a thrill. Nor, I'd appreciate it if you held off on the homicidal remarks until after you put your weapon down. Stat-wise, it's Fire Emblem versus Persona yet again, so you you know the deal at this point. FTL, blah blah blah. And yeah, the Big Bang Burger decides it again about how fair it is. Uh, but even without it, I think Haru wins. And that's cool. Akechi had plenty of alt choices, but Griffith made the most sense. Both pretend to be the friend of the protagonist while they secretly plan their downfall. Both at first have a color scheme of white, which is normally linked with beings of good, only to reject it and embrace the darkness, showing off their true self. While Akechi does eventually turn around, Griffith is bad to the bone. 
both serve as a main rival to the protagonist, and they both nearly kill the protagonist during their betrayal. I've heard Akechi wins, from obvious scaling to other Persona 5 characters, and Berserk generally doesn't hit that same level of power. All I really want for this fight is Akechi using both of his Personas, and ending it with a brutal finisher with his sword. Also, yes, this is a better matchup than him versus Light from Death Note. That matchup lives and dies based off Akechi being dumb enough to say his name. Just because one character inspired the other doesn't mean it's a match worth doing, and while Griffith still loses, at least he can actually fight and doesn't rely on a gimmicky book to win. Why are you even here? Kasumi has, like, nothing. I see her matched up with Cloud because of their suppressed memories thing and the similar journeys they go on learning to forgive themselves for their mistakes, but like Cloud stomps and Kasumi only stands a chance if Big Bang Burger is given max credit. Cloud has dozens of better matchups, heck they're already having him fight Link again, so there's not much of a chance this will ever happen. If it does one day that'll be cool, but honestly I doubt it will. Kasumi has basically nothing else, anything she does have she stomps or she gets stomped, and Cloud honestly has much more thematic matchups. We're unfortunately ending on a sour note, but hey, it, it be like that sometimes. Well, what did you guys think of these matchups? Do you like them? Hate them? Or do you think you have a better matchup? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you would like to see me do this again with another franchise, let me know in the comments. Well, that's all from me. This has been Tenton. Peace.